here to this place. Amen? Amen. Today is the day. All right? Even in the afternoon. Amen. Even later today, we'll be happy to visit someone. Maybe in the hospital. Maybe in a nursing home. Somebody sick. Maybe not those with uh, uh, sensitive uh, situations, you know. But today is a beautiful day. I always thought that I remember for months that November 4th, it's going to be God's closet day. We got confused. I had all the way in my mind, mind until I saw the calendar. <laughs> but, okay. Today, we're going we're gonna to worship God in God's work. We're going to think about God's work. Amen. How many of you are doing God's work? Amen. I see some hands. How many of you like to do that? Amen. How many of you refuse to do that? Nobody. Amen. Amen. You can do little things, you know, what God asks you to do. Little things, you know. You can do great things too, all right? So today, we're going to talk about God's work. Titus 3.8, I'm going to read again. The saying is sure. I desire that you insist on these things. Insist. Don't force them, but insist in these things. So that those who have come to believe in God may be careful to devote themselves to what? To good works. Amen? I want to be devote myself to good works. These things are excellent and profitable to everyone. Amen? So this is great. God's work is, 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 is great. Good works is great, are great. Because you share the love of God to others. Let's pray. Father, I thank you very much for these beautiful people that you have here. Even we had some visitors and thank you, Lord, because you are so good to us. You love us. You love is great to all of us. Please encourage us today to keep doing your work. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Galatians six ten says so. Then. Whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of the faith. James 1, 27. What's the true religion? Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt us. Uh, I was in Mexico in the year 1985. Remember? Some of you don't remember. I was in the train, in the metro, and uh, shaking came, I had the custom in Lima, Peru, because it was cus constant, is a seismic place, you know, 
little earthquakes, you know, sometimes harder than, you know, uh, than others. But it was in Mexico that morning, like after 7 o'clock in the morning, going to my job. I, I used to work at that moment in a printing shop. So the train is full in Mexico. At that moment, it's very full. Some, sometimes you don't, you don't step in the floor because they're lifting you up because it's so packed. So people got scared. And I had in my left hand my Sabbath school quarterly lesson. And I was very into it. And something happened. Doors opened. And before the doors opened, people were screaming, crying, and their knees praying to God, praying to their uh, gods. And I, I was not very concerned. You know, I said, it's like in Lima. Everything is going to be, you know, will go away. But I was sitting like in the middle of the, the cart. And then I went to near the door. So when I have to get up, it will be easier for me. Few people stayed. Everybody was gone. I thought, nothing is going on. What's, well, what's going on with these people? So, but I saw, you know, the, the park, the cars were, and, and I, 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 I saw them. You know, they were moving, you know. But they announced that the services are done for for today or so I stepped out I was walking out. I had to take a bus you know I got a bus you know walking was faster than being in the bus and I said what's going on people all people in the I didn't realize yeah believe me and I said I, I need to call I'm gonna get late I was going to the store to ask for phone. I didn't have cell phone, you know, at that years. You know. And uh, I was gonna call, I was gonna enter to a big glass door and I almost cut myself. And I said, oh, this is the window. I turned back, it was all dark, dusty. And I said, no phone, no nothing. I realized that I had to walk the whole day to go back to my home. I don't know if you had that experience. God was with me. You know, it was, I think it was Thursday. I don't remember what day it was. But Sabbath afternoon, you know, with all young people in the, with the members from my from my little church I was attending, we went to the, to the city center to help out, to rescue people. You know, ADRA, you know what ADRA means? It's like community service from our church. From that weekend to the end of the year, they were giving like 1,000 Baskets or bus or boxes of food and clothes and everything for whoever needs it. One thousand every single week to the end of the year. Fifty new houses were built for those they lost their homes. You know who did? Maybe you did, because when you help to Adra. It goes there. Last week, somebody asked me, is the church present in Acapulco? You know what, what happened in Acapulco? In the matter of one to, to, do, to two days, the storm came, devastated. One of the, one of the prettiest cities that I, 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 I visited in my life, Acapulco, when I came to Mexico. Beautiful city. 
I was impacted, you know. Those, uh, it was beautiful. I never seen a city like that before. So, I guess, you guess what? Our church is present there. Sometimes, sometimes they're before Red Cross. Because Red Cross is, let's say, officially, you know, in anywhere. But I thank you very much for your support. Here, we do in our local church as well, in our local community. Please invite someone to be blessed with what we have. I was amazed like a couple of weeks ago. But let's go to the word. Let's go. This is the pure religion, genuine religion. In sight of God, the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. If you follow the world, you don't want to do God's work. Please follow Jesus. The group of believers, you know, for me, the best church comparison, you know, Cascade Church is the, the, the Church of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, you know, after Upper Room. Oh, I love that church. The group of believers were united in their hearts and spirit. And some other Bible says, in one heart, in one spirit, united. All their differences were away, behind. Because for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, you have to be in unity in the church. If you want to have the Holy Spirit in your family, you have to have the unity in your family. Not always we're right. We have to humble ourselves to others. All this, all those in the group acted as that their private property belonged to everyone in the group. In fact, they shared everything. Can you share everything? Thank God for God's closet is sharing. With others. You remember Dorcas? Acts 9 and Jopa. There was a follower named Tabitha, a disciple. Her Greek name was Dorcas, which means dear, fast, quick to do God's work. She was. She was always doing good things for people and had given much to the poor. Verse 37, but she got sick and died. Why good people die? Verse 38, Yopa wasn't far from Lida. And the followers heard that Peter was there. So they sent two men to say to him, Please come with us as quickly as you can. You know, Peter was one of the fastest apostles of Jesus. You know, the only faster than Peter was who? Remember? John. Because he was younger. But Peter was fast in everything. Sometimes when he talked, they, he was so quick. But at once Peter went with them, the men took Peter upstairs into the room. Many widows were there crying. Why they were crying? Why widows crying? They showed Peter the coats and clothes that Dorcas had made while she was still alive. You know, what a wonderful woman. Why she was dead, you know, for the glory of God. Peter knelt down and prayed. Then he said, Tabitha, get up. 
the woman opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she shut up. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for that. Because she was still going to, uh, uh, you know, was more work to do. Verse 45, 41. Peter called, called in the widows and the other followers and showed them what Dorcas had been, that Dorcas had been raised from the dead. Everyone in Joppa heard what had happened. And many of them put their faith in the Lord. You know, do God's work. Whatever happens to you, keep on doing. We, we have only one life. Of course, when Jesus comes, we'll get up again and he will take us home upstairs. Okay? But if you still... Alive, if you have a, a good health, you know, uh, do something for the Lord. Do something in God's work. Galatians 5 says, Christian brothers, brother, do not please your old self. Live this free life by loving and helping others. You obey the whole law when you do this one thing. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. One thing. You know, love is not just a word. It's not, it's, it's not just a topic or a theory. Love is an action. You cannot love people without action. And two weeks ago... I was so amazed. Uh, I'll, I'll say something. You know, we have beautiful ministries here in the church, like deacons and deacone deaconesses and deacons ministry. You know, they, when you get into the church, you know, they smile you. They welcome you. You know, they, sometimes they give you a hug. You know? Because they're happy to, to have you here for, to worship. That ministry is nice. Even if somebody is sick or in the hospital, they go. They take some food to them. Some meal. It's, it's nice. Even we have card ministry, I think, I don't know how many years, more than 10 years. Did you receive any card? I did. When you get sick, they will send you. They, they, I think 40 cards a month or something. I don't, I don't remember uh, because I didn't want to say more things about one ministry than the other. Wow, music ministry, it's beautiful. You can be part of it. I'm happy that my wife was singing with my daughter today, you know, leading the worship time, you know, the music ministry, you know, we can take music to people in the, maybe not in the hospital, but in the nursing home or at home. If somebody misses the church, you know, we can, we can take music songs to, you know, Backpack ministry, you know, it's unbelievable. And there's a full of things, good things uh, in the backpack for those that need. Maybe some people in the streets, they don't know where to sleep, what to eat. Backpack ministry is doing great. God's closet, you know. It was announced for today, and people came, praise God, you know, and it was, it's for tomorrow. I'm going to invite this lady, you know, Lois, come, you come, please, and give us some updates, and what, what are you doing with this ministry? Good morning. Do you believe there's no accidents with God? 
We had the opportunity when I walked through the door with four families already here <laughs> to get close, and that was a big uh, uh, surprise. Uh, but fortunately, we were ready. We had everything there, so people just got to the place, and we served them, and we will continue to serve them through the day um, because we announced it on Facebook by accident. But tomorrow is the big day. So all of you who are going to help, we want you here at 9 o'clock in the morning. No later, please, because we have to be ready to serve everyone. We're going to be excited to have people who speak Spanish because we get a lot of people who speak Spanish. This is our fifth distribution of clothing. We do it twice a year. Last time we had 150 families or more, so we're expecting a big crowd. We know that this is a ministry because people need clothes, but at the same time they need Jesus. So we also have a, a, a table with tracks and we talk to them about Jesus when, we, when we're helping them with the clothes. And so this is a, a ministry that is, is wonderful for our church. And it's a very hard work, but God has given us a strength, and we are expecting a lot of people tomorrow. So I hope that you'll be here to help, and we look forward to seeing you. We've had wonderful soups made and delicious lunch for you, so you won't have to worry about that. And we are looking forward to serving so many people. Thank you, Louis. Thank you very much. Thank you for your help in God's closet. It's, it's uh, God's work. It's a good, good work. And tomorrow, from 9 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock, I think, you're invited. Not forced, but invited. Amen? Amen. And radio ministry, you know, I think we're going to have a two, two stations pray, uh, pray about this, you know, because radio gets to the places that personally we cannot do that. But radio ministry is going on. My free Bible study. Somebody was visiting home by home to them. And one of, the, I think this Friday, it's going to be a new Bible study group to start. Health ministry. So, health nuggets, I like it, but I miss. I hope we can restart with health nuggets. Outdoor ministry, you know, they not only exercising, keeping shape, and their health, they go with other people to walk and talk about good things, you know, and they can take uh, little trucks, you know, and to share with them. BBS, Vacation Bible School. I don't know how we're going to do it. We soon, we're going to do it. I thank you, everyone, because your church is, is working is doing God's work. Proverbs 25, 21 says, if, you're, if your enemy is hungry, what do you do? Feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink, please. If you have enemies. I hope you don't. But strangers, other people. Okay. Luke 10, we have a, a story Wonderful story, parable from Jesus. Jesus replied as a man, because it was a question. Somebody asked, how can I enter to the kingdom of heaven? Oh, love your brother, love your neighbor. Who's my, who's my neighbor? So Jesus replied, as a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. I've been there. They asked us to be careful. 
double careful. We had to stop down. That road from Jerusalem to Jericho is a dangerous road, not only in the geography, but also with the people. Well, it's one of the most dangerous places in the world. I don't know if today is, but in Jesus' time, and when, when I visited, it was the case. Robbers attacked him and grabbed everything he had. They beat him up and run off, leaving him half dead, agonizing. Verse 31 says, it happened that a priest was going down that road. Priest. When he saw that man, he did, not that he didn't see, he saw the man. He walked by on the other side. Is a priest is like a pastor, you know? <laughs> Imagine I'm coming to the church. Last Sabbath, I was going to the other church. It was cold, cold and freezing. Somebody was walking in a row. And I was thinking, what should I do? But one van saved me. Because the van stopped and, you know, took care of that. Sometimes we were afraid to help out. Next a Levite came there, and after he went over and looked at the man, he walked by on the other side of the road. The Levites had the privilege to serve God, to lead in the worship, to lead in the word. You know, the only one family had that privilege. If you want to be a priest, if you want to be the pastor, you cannot be if you're not Levite. The priest had to be Levites. Only one family had the privilege to lead the church, but he didn't help, like the priest. I hope we don't have that situation. Verse 33 but a certain Samaritan. You know who was the Samaritan? Stranger. The enemy. You know, God's people didn't like Samaritans. Because Samaritans went far away from God. Far away from the church. You know, those kind of people? That they're far from God. They, 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 they don't... Uh, God's mercy cannot get through them. You know, God's grace is not for them. It's just for me because I'm right. I, I, I'm obedient. I, I'm a good Christian, good citizen. But Samaritans, you know, were strangers. As he journeyed, journey came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. Somebody far from God. Somebody was in sin. Somebody was not admitted in the church. Sometimes we are very selective. You know, in heaven, we're going to see many Samaritans. In heaven, we'll see all kinds of people that they're not here maybe. He had compassion. You know why? Because Jesus, Jesus was teaching one lesson. Who was this stranger? Who is the stranger to this world, to this people? Only Jesus. He came to rescue, you know, people that agonizing. Verse 34 says, he went to him. And bandaged his wounds, pouring an oil and wine, medicine, the cure. Then he put the man on his own donkey, in his own car. You know, brought him to an inn, 
to a hotel, five stars hotel, or the best hospital, St. Charles, and took care of him. You know, can you take people to the hospital? Can you take people to best hotel? Plus, the next morning, he gave the innkeeper two silvers coin, silver coins and said, please, take care of this man. You know, he gave, you know how much? Around $1,500. Can you give to your enemy, to somebody is not from the church, can you give, you know, $1,500? He gave, he did. And please take care of this man. If you spend more than this on him, I will pay you when I return. Jesus will give you reward when he returns. Amen? You know, he will take us home where there is no suffering, no agonizing. Everything is, it will be happiness when he comes. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2 says, Let brotherly love continue. Amen? Brotherly love continue. Don't neglect to show hospitality. For by doing this, some have welcomed angels and guests without knowing it. I know it's hard at this time. You know, a lot of crimes can happen in our society, but we can do something. You know, we're, we're not necessarily do 100% that, literally, but we can do something, you know, for others. Okay. We may not go to Middle East to help out. We may not go to Africa, you know, to go there to help out people or Asia or South America. But we can do something. At least we can pray for them, for the needy and support. First Corinthians 13, 3 says, I may give away everything I have. And I may even give my body as an offering to be burned. But I gain nothing if I do not have what? Love. Don't do things by force. Don't feel obligated. In this church, please do it with love. Amen? So... God's closet tomorrow. You, you may bring some of your neighbor. You know, you may go to the, I don't know, to the store and invite someone to come. There are some invitations, you know, or, or do something, you know, or come and help out. Just being here is a great help. Let's do that. Amen. First John 4, 21 says, God gave us this command. Those who love God must also love their brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's do everything with love. Amen. Today, I would like to say God to God. Sometimes I feel like a machine. You know, everything is, I am programmed to do. I would like to ask God to do with love. Sometimes I don't have love enough to my wife, to my daughter, to my son, or to my church. I want to ask God, give me the privilege to do with love. And God's closet must be done with love. Amen. If anybody here would like to say to God, please allow me to do things with love, with more love. If you understand, I would like to pray. And I would like to rededicate my life to do things with more love, with more kindness. Father, I thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to 
to do your work, to do your service in our community, in our family, in our church. Sometimes we miss something important, which is love. Please give us that love of Dorcas Hat, that love of the Samaritan the, the love of Jesus to, to make others welcome into your kingdom to make others be prepared for, for better, better things for your kingdom please Lord give us the privilege to work for you I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.